Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you here again. The Quran and the Sunnah explain the following about hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about hellfire many things in the Quran. In Jahannam. إن جهنم كانت مرصادا للطاغين مآبا لابثين فيها أحقابا لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا إلا حميما وغساقا جزاء وفاقا Verily, Allah says, indeed, indeed, Jahannam is something that is an imprisonment awaiting those who are going to be prisoned inside. Imprisoned inside. لِلطَّغِينَ مَآبًا It is awaiting in warning and threat to those who are transgressors, to those who wrong their way and turn away, who are criminals, who turn away from Allah's message and challenge Him. لابثين فيها أحقابا When they enter it, they will stay in there uncountable years, uncountable centuries. And some of them, they'll enter it forever. لا يذوقون فيها بردا They will never feel any kind of coolness that is comforting. ولا شرابا Nor any type of drink that can quench their thirst. Illa except Hamim, absolute hate, wa and things that make them choke, jazaan wifaqa, a justifiable recompense, a justifiable consequence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that. The Prophet ﷺ was walking, as we said last week, and they heard a rumbling. And the, Prophet, and the companion said, O Messenger of God, what is this rumbling? He said, This was a stone that was thrown into hellfire 70 years ago. 70 years ago. This stone was thrown into hellfire, and now it reached the bottom. Hellfire is unimaginably huge, humongous. Our Rasul Sallallahu describes the size of the people that enter it. He says, "Dirsu al-kafir, aw nabu al-kafir, mithlu uhud, wa ghilzu jildihi masiratu thalathati ayyam lil-raqib al-musri'a." He said, "The back tooth, or one of the teeth of the people who enter hellfire, will be the size of the mountain of Uhud." So if the tooth is the size of a mountain, can you imagine the size of the body? And then he adds, and the thickness of the skin of the person in hellfire is as thick as riding on a, on a fast horse for three days. Imagine you're riding on a fast horse and it travels very fast. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, al musri not just any jockey, not just any horse rider, a very fast one. He said three days. The thickness of the skin. Why? Because the bigger the object, the longer it takes to burn, right? Hellfire, ya akhwan, is something, wallahi, not to be taken lightly. And I recall a hadith we mentioned last week in relation to the majority of the believers that enter hellfire. What do they enter because of? Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers and sisters, because it, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sins by saying that. He said, the, the, the majority of the reasons why Muslims end up in hellfire for a, for a while is, he called it muhakkirat al dhunub They are the sins that we take for granted. You know, like little things. They're forbidden, but they're not major. 
And we don't take them as important. We say, it's just a sin, man. It's all right. Just a little bit. It's just a kiss. It's just a look. It's just a, a lie. It's just a little cheat. It's just a little theft. It's just once. It's okay. We take them for granted. What happens when you take a small sin for granted? When you don't care about it, when you're careless? What happens? What do you do? You keep doing it. You keep repeating it. That's the danger. When you take something so lightly, we, in our nature, we continue to repeat it until finally it becomes a habit. We, we're desensitized to it. We don't have any more sen we're not sensitive to it anymore. And so it becomes a normal part of our life. Would you believe that some people, and I'm very sad to say that among the Muslims themselves, they have false hope. False hope. And so, sins in their life become so normal like the eating and drinking. It means nothing. It actually becomes halal to them. They'll think it's halal. It's alright. What's wrong with that? It's halal. It's okay. Why is religion so hard? Religion is not hard. We make it hard on ourselves. But when we take sins for granted, we ruin our character. You know, we tell our children, don't lie. Why are we so harsh on that? We are so careful that our children, they're five, six years old, soon, we teach them not to lie or steal. And we punish them. Why? Because we don't want this habit to develop in them. They're just children. They lied once or twice. It's not a big deal. No one's going to hold it against them. They're just children. But we're afraid of the habit. It becomes a routine. And so they become liars. They become cheats. They become thieves. Similarly, Islam forbid minor sins because of this same reason. So Rasul says with great sorrow, many of the people of my ummah will enter hellfire because they take minor sins for granted and therefore that becomes a, ritual, a habit for them. So some people have false hope. God will forgive me. God will forgive me. You're sick. You're ill. You need to cure yourself. God cannot be fooled. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a verse came down one time stating that the punishment of Allah is surely going to happen. The verse said this. Surely, indeed, without a doubt, the punishment of your Lord is going to happen. The torture of your Lord is going to happen. Sahabas, some sahab, some of the Prophet's companions cried and wept like babies. Umar was on his camel. He fell off and he went unconscious for hours. Every time he would remember, he'd go unconscious. Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an ayah came down says, وَطَعَامًا ذَا غُصَّةً وَعَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And they will be fed food that will make them choke and there will be a, a painful torture. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was eating a piece of food and he choked on it a little bit. Those who know it. There was a great khalifa by the name of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. We say radiallahu anhu. He existed after the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was such a righteous khalifa, a leader of the Muslims. He had... There was a woman who served his household and he loved her and she also loved him as in love, as in like brother-sister relationship. She entered one time and said to him, I saw a dream, O Amir al-Mu'minin. I saw so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and, -so and you. As if the world had ended and you three were crossing the bridge over hellfire. The first one crossed and he fell. The second one tried to cross and he fell. And then came you, O Amir al-Mu'minin. She looked up and he had gone unconscious. Amir al-Mu'minin went unconscious. And then he awoke with her slapping him on the cheek, because you know, someone slapping him on the cheek, and she is saying, Najawta ya Amir al-Mu'minin, najawt. You were safe, O Amir al-Mu'minin, you were safe. And that was the only thing that made him... Work. What am I trying to say? Those people who knew what the punishment of Allah is like, and hellfire is like, they cannot bear it. One Sahabi used to say to his daughter, My daughter, the remembrance of hellfire has made me unable to sleep many of the nights. Now, when you know about it this much, this is what actually happens to you. And what results in you? You become a more righteous person. You become a more humble person. You become a better person to others. Your character becomes un unbeatable. Allah says, my servants are those who when they worship me, they worship me in two ways. They worship me with two feelings. Number one, hope. You worship Allah hoping that he will accept your worship and make you enter paradise because he is so merciful and forgiving. But on the other side, you also got fear. Fear that Allah may not accept your worship or that your sins may be too much that it will end up in hellfire. So we live a life between these two. When you see an opportunity to do good, hope. 
when you see a sin, fear. And so it keeps you balanced with Allah. When you do a sin, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the grace forgiver. Don't worry, brothers and sisters. Don't ever despair from Allah's forgiveness. And be sure that when you ask Allah to save you from hellfire, He will be idnihi ta'ala. When you ask Him. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says in relation to the skin of the people of hellfire, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُصْلِيهِمْ نَارًا كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا Those who disbelieve in our signs, Allah says, they shall be imprisoned. Look at the word. Imprisoned in hellfire. They can't escape. Every time their skin burns, nadijat. Use that word also for fruit that is ripened. You know, imagine cherries or apples that hang onto their mother tree for past their time. What happens to them? They overcook. Huh? They over, become over ready. And you can see the peeling and they change color. Or when you overcook a meal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said nadijat. You overcook. Every time their skin is overcooked, meaning it's gone, and it reaches the meat underneath, when there is no more sensation, we recreate another layer of skin. For one purpose, so they may taste the pain. Allah is surely wise and honorable and powerful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so these people in hellfire now are burning. They have been given clothing made of some type of fire. They have been given clouds that look like clouds of rain, but when they rain, they rain acid. Well, they have been given food, and when they eat it, they choke, and Allah says in the Quran, their intestines disintegrate. They drink certain fluids that when they bring their faces close to the dish, the faces of the, the, the skins of their face begin to burn and it melts into the bowl. There are so many descriptions that no heart can ever imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us their state now. Wahum yastarikhuna fiha. They begin to scream. The word yastarikhun. Allah, usually there's the word yunadun. They call out. There is a word where they say, where they say um, yarfa'una aswatam. They raise their voices. But here Allah says yastarikhun. It is, a, it is a, a, a disturbing, a disturbing, terrifying sound of scream. A, a disturbing, terrifying sound of scream. I don't know if any of you have heard this before. They had nightmares of these types of screams. They try their best in horror movies to do these types of screams. So Allah says, وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا They continuously give disturbing sounds of screaming. Saying, وَهُمْ يَسْتَرِخُونَ فِيهَا رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ oh, Our Lord, please take us out. Take us out and let us try again. Give us another chance. If we do this again, then we are truly oppressors to ourselves. And Allah doesn't even reply to them. Allah doesn't speak to them. When they scream out like that, the angels who are in hellfire torturing them reply to them. They say to them, be quiet, silence. If you are to be returned, you'll do exactly the same thing. We have given you chances and opportunities and given you the warning. You heard it. You understood it. But you mocked, you mocked those who warned you. You teased those who warned you. You made fun of Allah's messenger, message and messengers. It's throughout the Quran it says this. The angels keep replying to them about this mockery. And so one of the examples is in the Quran, Surah Al-Mutaffifin. I want you to listen to it. Allah says at the end of this Surah, Al-Mutaffifin. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Talking about the people of heaven now, what he says to them about the people of hellfire. Inna <laughs> 
كانوا من الذين آمنوا يضحكون. He says to the people of of heaven and also to us in the Quran, on the day of judgment or in hellfire, those who are criminals, in the former life in this world, they used to laugh and mock those who believed. This happens today, doesn't it? They mock and tease those who believed. وإذا مروا بهم يتغامزون. And whenever these criminals passed by the believers, they looked at each other and they began to wink. You know, wink, give facial gestures, smirks on their faces while you're not looking. One face in front of you, another face with their friends. يتغامزون. They wink at each other. Let's, let's do something to them. Let's say something about them. Let's have fun. وَإِذَا انْقَلَبُوا إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِمْ انْقَلَبُوا فَكِهِينَ And whenever they turn back, they go back to their families, their tribes, their friends. They go back making jokes out of them, making jokes about the believers among each other. One face to you and another face with their families and friends. They might say to you, yeah, I respect what you're doing. Behind with their families, these idiots. How silly and stupid they are. Some of them are like that. These are the criminals. Allah describes them as criminals. And whenever they used to see them, amongst each other they would say, look at these losers. They are lost. They are lost. Following this ancient religion. Following this this you know this illogical way that's what they used to say. Allah says this in the Quran about them and he hears them Allah says but they weren't the ones sent to judge these people you weren't sent to judge or to you know put these people to accountability everybody's on his own Allah says now فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ Today now, today is the revenge. Those who, of the believers who used to be laughed at, today they will be laughing at the criminals who used to laugh at them. عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ Not only will they be laughing at them, They'll also be reclining on beautiful beds, couches, beautiful, I mean, it's undescribable in Jannah. You'll hear about it next week, inshallah. They're reclining on beautiful cushions in paradise, drinking and sipping away and enjoying their life and laughing at them. Look at the difference. Here they're toiling and working like you and they're laughing at you. Up there, the believers are in paradise in absolute bliss laughing at them. Allah says in the Quran, هَلْ ثُوِّبَ الْكُفَّارُ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ O oh believers, those who, those who were criminals and disbelieved and rejected and challenged, have they not received what they deserve? On a day of judgment, Allah will say to the believers, have they not received now for what they have done to you? And we'll be happy about that. So the people of hellfire will try to call out for the people of heaven, but they will not be allowed to reach them, except in one way. Allah describes this in the Quran. Conversation between a person of heaven and a person of hellfire. Here is the first bit of conversation I want to present to you. This is in the beginning when they fall into hellfire. You see, this is in the beginning of the... They're still new to them. So they remember that they used to have friends who were in this life that were believers a neighbor, a friend, a colleague at work, a friend at school, a family friend, a cousin, a relative. And they will remember them. Say to the angels, we used to have friends who were believers, we used to have them. Ask them, talk to them. They think maybe they can help us. So then, the angels of heaven come to the people in, he in heaven. And the people of heaven also remember that they used to have colleagues and friends, well, not friends, but colleagues and associates or cousins or whatever in this life. But they were disbelievers and criminals. And they had hurt the believers. They had wronged the believers. They had mocked the believers. So the angels say to them, what would you like? They will say, we want to know what happened to them. We don't see them among us here in heaven. 
And then Allah says to them, Allah says to the believers, قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ Allah will say, do you want to have a look at what happened to them? And the believers will say yes. This ayah came down in relation to two people who existed at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them was, of, was, was a man of God and the other one mocked him. One called him to the wrong way and the other one called him to the right way. And the one who called him to the wrong way almost influenced the one who was calling to the right way to follow him. But the one who was on the right way took a stance and turned away. Allah sent down a verse in relation to these two. So he says, Allah will call out to this person and say, do you want to know what happened to that companion of yours that used to call you to the wrong way? هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ Do you all want to have a look? Allah says in relation to him, فَاطَّلَعَ فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ And then he will look and he will see him in the midst of hellfire. Now Allah uses different names. Remember Jahim, Jahannam, Saqar, Sa'ir, these different names, colorful names of torment. And he will say to the person in hellfire, the hellfire will recognize him, and he will say, it's me, it's me. He looks terrible, ugly, charcoal, burnt. And Allah describes that they will have all of their eyeball, the whole eyeball will look like a terrifying blue. Not the iris, but the whole eyeball. There's no white in it. There's no other color. A terrible bluish, and some of them terrible greenish, but the whole eyeball. And some of them will be filled with blood, red, because of the torment and pain. And they will have a terrible look. They will call out, it's me, your friend. And when the angels say, that's so and so, the person of heaven will say, In kitta la turdeen. In kitta la turdeen. Ah, you almost made me fall with you. You almost made me fall with you. And he will turn away and say, Alhamdulillah that Allah had saved me from you. The state on that day is different. Will you feel sorry for friends that you had that were disbelievers in this life? Possibly. But Allah will not allow intercession except for those of your friends in this life who were muwahidun, who used to, have, who used to be monotheistic, they worshipped only one God. Yes, they may have done many sins and stuff, but they died with tawheed. They will be saved, inshaAllah, with the request of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu You don't need to say anything. There are certain people in paradise who will be able to intercede for people of hellfire from among their family. Yes, if members of their family ended up in hellfire, they'll be able to intercede for them on one condition, that they were Muslims. And number two, only certain Muslims will be able to do so. For example, those who memorized the Qur'an and applied it in their life, they'll be able to intercede for a number of their family members. Another example, those who struggled in the path of Allah and died in jihad, like in struggling in the path of Allah, in all of its levels, they'll be able to intercede for 10 members of their family, and Allah will save them. They'll forgive them all and say, I'm saving them for you. As for the rest, you will not be able to intercede because this is the privilege of our, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be the one who will intercede for them. And so, they will be saved bit by bit. At the end of this talk, we'll inshallah explain to you how. The other types of conversations that will occur are the ones between the people of hell and the angels that are torturing them. And the guardian of hellfire. The guardian of hellfire, his name is Malik. We re recall last week, the week before, we said, He has never smiled since the day hellfire was created. He has no remorse. He has no feelings of sensitivity. He is desensitized to all types of horror. No feelings. Doesn't feel sorry for anyone. And he was the only angel in heaven whom the Prophet ﷺ, when he ascended up there in Isra or Al-Mi'raj, he greeted him and he only replied without a smile. Every other angel smiled and welcomed him. He just said, Wa alaykum as -salam. He said, who is this? Jibreel salam said, he is Malik. He has never smiled since the day hellfire was created. How can he? It is recorded in one hadith that a man who lived very luxurious in this life, the most luxurious man, king, will be dipped in hellfire once for a few seconds. And then he will be asked, do you remember any luxury? He'll say, I swear by God, I never had any luxury in my life. He forgets it because of the pain. The people of hellfire, after giving up on the people of heaven, will turn to the angels that are torturing them and then to the guardian of hellfire. And they will ask him, 
to ask Allah to give them another chance. And here are some of these accounts in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, وَقَالُوا يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ وَقَالُوا يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ And they will say, O oh Malik, please ask your Lord to perish us, destroy us. We don't want to live anymore. We don't want to live anymore. Why? Are they really living? Allah describes their state of living in the Quran by saying, لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا. The person in hellfire will never die in it and will never live in it. Sahabas asked, What does it mean, a messenger of God? They will never die in it, we understand. We will never live in it. How is that? And he replied, They will not live a life that you can call a good life. You'd rather be dead. And Allah says in the Quran, وَيَأْتِيهِ الْمَوْتُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِمَيِّتِ Death, all the reasons why a person should die, will come to these people in hellfire. Every single reason. Every piece of element that would cause you to die normally in this life will come to them in, in, in hellfire and more and they will not die. They're supposed to die, but they won't die. All they feel is the, is the torment, the pain of death, but they won't die. So then, in the hadith it says in relation to this ayah, they will say, O Malik, ask your Lord to just destroy us. We don't want to exist anymore. In the hadith it says, the reply comes to them after 1,000 years. They're waiting anxiously for that reply. Can you imagine? An anxious hope that you will now finally be destroyed. The reply comes to them, إِنَّكُمْ makithun. You are to stay in there forever. In another verse, a different reply comes. Malik says to them, قَالَ اخْسَأُوا فِيهَا he will say, Burn in there like the low lives you are. Burn in there like the low lives you are. And don't ever talk again. Don't ever speak again. Brothers and sisters, this is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. Is Allah. A harsh Lord? No. Because if He was a harsh Lord, He would not have warned us in such detail right now. <coughs> Allah has given us the way out, but left it up to our decision. Obviously in hellfire there are different levels, as we said last week. You'll enter, a person will enter into the level they deserve. And they will not enter hellfire until they are convinced they deserve it. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. They will not pass the day of judgment until everything is justified. And that person is convinced they deserve hellfire. Otherwise they will not enter it. Some of the people who will not enter it are the crazy people who didn't, who didn't have a state of mind in this life. Or those who never heard about Islam. Or those who never understood Islam. So there are different circumstances. Those will have a different circumstance on the day of judgment. But Allah is talking about those who deserve it. Among the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Now, another conversation happens. Since they gave up on being destroyed, they look at the animals. And I remember that the animals had died. On the Day of Judgment, Allah brings up the animals, right? And brings back the rights between the animals. Then they saw them that they turn into soil. They don't go to heaven or hell, but they turn into soil. And now remember... So, you know, after you request and you give up on your request, what do you start doing? You're in despair. And you just say gibberish words. You say wishful words. So they begin to say wishful words. And the disbeliever, the kafir, the rejecter of faith, the challenger, will say in hellfire, I wish I was turned into soil. Allahu Akbar. So would there come a time for a human to wish that he was an animal? 
that an animal is more honorable than him or her? Yeah. Allah says this in the Quran, describing people who don't wish to follow Allah's message, describing people who challenge Allah. He says, kal-an'am. They are like animals, but they are An'am means livestock. They are like livestock, but they are, some of them are even worse. Conversations now between the people of hellfire. So they've given up on the people of heaven. And they ask them to give them water. Allah doesn't let them. They ask the angel to perish them. They ask their torturers to give them remorse. They start to talk words of despair. Actually, before they talk to each other, they begin to ask the angels, Malik, for one more thing. They say, all right, please, we're thirsty. At least just give us once, just once in these thousands of years, water to drink. Once. But it says very well. They see clouds coming and they have hope. Remember what we said? Part of the torture in hellfire is that you, you, Allah raises your hope and then it crushes. So clouds come and they said water. When it rains, it's fire, it's, it's acid, it's lava. So then they turn to each other. And what kind of conversations do they have to each other? Blame. Each one begins to blame the other. It is because of you. It is because of you. No, it's because of you. You did this to me. You did that to me. Hoping that maybe the angels can hear it so that they can say, hold on, it's not his fault. But no, judgment is over. So they blame. That's how the human is. In the hadith, it says that some people in hellfire who were adulterers, what is their punishment? Here are some examples. There is a well inside of hellfire where the adulterers are tortured in there from time to time. They are hung with hooks from their private parts and their chests. And fire from beneath them rises and burns them again and again and again. And the men and the women adulterers will have to drink and eat well, drink, consume from the discharge that comes out of these people in, in hellfire from their, from, their, from their backside and their front. This is their food. In another hadith, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about people who consume you know, interest, riba, when they're not in need of it. When they're not in need of it. And some of them who are fornicators and adulterers, you know, when you're married and you commit intercourse in a haram way with other women and so on. He says there is a valley in hellfire that has scorpions and snakes. And these scorpions are the size of camels and cows. When they sting that person, they feel the poison for a thousand years. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that. These are some narrations that we read in the Quran, the hadith that have come to us. There are many types of tortures in hellfire. We ask Allah to save us from them. It comes to a stage, my dear brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that an angel will come between heaven and hell. This is when people of heaven have just entered and people of hellfire have just entered. On top of the torture that they are feeling, the people of hellfire, and on top of the comfort and beauty that the people of heaven are feeling, in contrast, an angel will come between heaven and hell, and the doors of heaven and the doors of hell will open. So the people of hellfire, all of them will see this angel. And the people of heaven, all of them will see this angel. And what has he got? In the Sahih Hadith, it says in Bukhari and Muslim, he will come with a ram-looking creature. You know what a ram is, right? It's a male sheep with huge horns. This angel will grab this huge, humongous ram. And its color is pitch black. And the, peep, and the angel calls out to the people of heaven. And the people of heaven, they get a little bit of a sense of, of, of discomfort. Why? They get a sense of discomfort that... Is there something wrong? Are we needing to come out of Jannah now? Why are they calling us? And the people of hellfire get a sense of comfort. The opposite. 
hold on, they're calling us again. Maybe some of us are going to come out. He says, Ya Ahl al Jannah, O people of heaven, they look. Ya wa Ya Ahl al Nar, O people of hellfire, and they look. And then they gra- he grabs the ram and he slaughters the ram. And the ram dies. He says, This is death. O people of heaven, khuludun bila maut. Eternal life without death anymore. And O people of hell, khuludun bila maut. Eternal life without death. In other words, death has been killed. No one will die anymore. If you're in heaven, you're eternally happy. If you're in hellfire, you're eternally miserable. There's nothing in between. Every negative thing in this life, well, everything in this life, you have some good and some bad in it, right? Think of it, even the forbidden things. Alcohol, some good, some bad. Gambling, some good, some bad. Zina, adultery, some good, some bad. Stealing, some good, some bad. Everything. In hellfire, only the bad stays, but the bad effects of things. Fire burns, but you can also heat yourself, warm yourself. In hellfire, it only burns. You're not allowed to warm yourself. It won't give you vitamin D. It won't do any of these things. In heaven, it's the opposite. Everything in this life, only the positive element of it is left. You see? Food tastes beautiful when you're hungry, but then it tastes ugly when you're full and you're forced to eat more. In heaven, you eat and eat, but you never get full. And you never get hungry. It's just what? It's the pleasure that's in between that stays. In hellfire, you get fooled. Over and over, shoved down your throat, down the person's throat, and it burns. Or they get extremely hungry to the point where their bodies begin to decay. In hellfire, there is torture of cold and torture of heat. We said this last week. Where cold becomes heat and heat becomes more heat. Finally, my brothers and sisters, what else happens? There are still Muslims in hellfire. And so the people of heaven who are allowed to be given intercession to intercede for people, members of their family and friends, they will be called out and say, and said, you have an opportunity to save members of your family and friends in hellfire. O oh, oh, memorizers of the Quran who applied it, come. O oh, martyrs, come. And so on. And then they will intercede. They will look and they will say, oh my Lord, please save members of my family. Allah will save them. Muwahidun. The Prophet ﷺ said in a Sahih Hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, in similar meaning, he said, any person who has an atom's worth of tawheed, you know what tawheed is, right, everyone? Yeah? Tawheed, absolute monotheism in Allah, belief and in practice, they will be saved from hellfire. One day they'll be saved, sooner or later. This is a hope, but don't take it for granted. Tawheed means applying it as well. When you do worship, you worship only Allah. You don't have any partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any of your actions. Your love is only for Allah. Your loyalty is only for Allah. We'll have a session about the meaning of Tawheed, inshallah, in later classes to come. There will be people who used to pray, but they end up in hellfire. They pray, but they end up in hellfire. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's in the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ So woe, wail is a valley in hellfire. So in other words, hellfire to those who pray. And then if you continue the verse, it says, those who when do, they do come to pray, they are neglectful of their prayers. So they pray on and off. They pray carelessly. They pray without wudu sometimes. They are the same people who do good actions just to show off in front of people. So when they pray, they pray to please people, to look like righteous people. You know, this sometimes happens when a young man wants to ask the hand of someone's daughter and that family is religious, suddenly they start to pray. Okay? Wants to look righteous. They get married afterwards, true colors come out. Allahu Akbar. الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ And they are the same people usually who are not generous and do not donate. These people end up in hellfire. However, some of them who prayed some prayers sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
or did some actions sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after burning, they will have a spot on their head right here. Some section here that will never be burnt. This is in a hadith in Sahih Muslim that the people who were muwahidun and used to pray at least on and off sincerely, in hellfire, there is a place on their forehead that will not burn. It will stay lighting up. Allah will, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after people enter heaven, he'll keep coming out and going back in. Coming out and going. What is he doing? He comes out, standing, you know, out saying, Oh my Lord, there are still members of my ummah in hellfire. Please save them. Oh my Lord, your promise is true and this is your promise to me. Allah gave only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among all the prophets this promise. That he will be the only one allowed to save his followers. No other prophet had been given this privilege. So we are privileged to be from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yeah? That's why we practice his sunnah as much as we can. As much as we can. Loving the Prophet ﷺ doesn't just mean when someone swears at him, we're ready to fight him. No. It's understanding who the Prophet is. When you love someone, what do you do? What do you do when you love someone? You imitate them. You imitate them. Our Rasul ﷺ will keep coming out. My Ummah, my Ummah, my Ummah. And so Allah will say to the angels, Go! To the request of my messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because Allah loves him the most. Go, every single Muslim believer that's in hellfire, that has an atom's worth of tawheed, take them out, and the angels will go looking at them, and they will know them by a sign. The sign will be the spot on their head, as we said according to the Sahih Hadith, and they will bring out every person with that sign over here. They will save them and take them out, and they will take them to a particular river. Nahrul Hayat, I think it's called, the river of life. They'll take him there, and they are unconscious, and their bodies have been charcoaled, it's burnt. And they'll be placed into this river and washed, and then placed on the, on, on, on the banks of the river. And suddenly their bodies transform from ugliness to beauty, from darkness to light. And they will still have one sign, the same place on their forehead becomes the sign in heaven, people will know that these are the people who were saved from hellfire. They will smile to them and love them, and they will come to them, and they will be called Masakin Ahlul Jannah, the poor people of paradise. In this life, in my culture, I don't know about yours, probably even the Turkish culture, when they see someone who is, um, you know, humble and is nice to you, and you can easily cheat him, only because he fears Allah. Some of the wicked people, they call him a darwish, you know, darwish or, or a miskeen, this poor man. You know, he's a miskeen. They look down at them. No, but they are honorable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not talking about people who are, you know, uh, you know, wimps and wusses. No, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the strong Muslims who hold on to their religion strongly. But as soon as they see you, with, you know, with a beard or, or, you, or you're praying, they think they can outdo you. So this guy is, is a miskeen. So they take your money or they cheat you. No. You can do the same. But you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, when I said beard, I don't mean particularly only the bearded people are the ones that are important, by the way. Brothers and sisters or the hijab women are the ones. There are some bearded people who, don't, who are the worst example of Islam. And there are some veiled women who are also the worst of Islam. But generally speaking, you know, the people who are sincere in that practice, they're the ones we're talking about. So the people of heaven, al-masakin, ahl al-jannah, they're the ones who are saved from hellfire and they are the poorest in Jannah. Then, my question is, how will the angels know you if you've never prayed in your life? How will the angels know a person who's never prayed in their life? That's, that's a serious question. Then finally, the last person that will be saved from hellfire. And here is the hadith. The last person will be saved from hellfire. In narrated in Sahih Muslim. It says that he will be saved from hellfire and he will be placed in a place somewhere between heaven and hell. He's not in hell and he's not in heaven. But he can still hear the people of hell. 
and witness some of it, but he can't hear anything of people of heaven. As he is sitting there, he turns to hellfire out of agony and he says, Alhamdulillah, الذي نجاني منك. Praise be to Allah who has saved me from you. Alhamdulillah, الذي أعطاني ما لم يعطي أحدا من العالمين. Praise be to Allah who has given me something that he has never given to anyone before me. He doesn't know that he's the last person. He thinks he's the only one saved. Allahu Akbar. On that day, that's everybody thinks that they're judged by themselves. And because of the torment, he says, Alhamdulillah, I'm saved. He's given me something he's never given to anyone before me. He doesn't know that everyone's already beaten him to heaven and taken their positions. So then he sits there for a while. In the hadith, it says, Then he says, Oh my Lord, can you please just one thing I request from you, my Lord. Can you take me away a little bit of a distance from hellfire? Because its sound is disturbing to me. I don't want to be close to it. And then Allah will say to him, My servant, if I do so, will you ask me for anything else? He will say, Oh my Lord, glory be to you. I will not ask you for anything else. He says, Do you promise me? He will say, Oh, I promise you. He goes, Very well. So then he is moved. And then suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deliberately makes a tree grow at a distance where he can see it, a beautiful tree. Then he will say, after a long time, Ay Rabb, my Lord, Please, can you just take me a little bit closer to that tree so that I may use its shade and so I can drink some of the water that's around it? Allah will say to him, but you promise me not to ask. Why are you asking me again? He'll say, my Lord, please, this is my last request. He says, if I do so, will you ask me for anything else? He said, no, I promise. So he puts him underneath that tree. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises another tree which is nicer than the other one with fruits and stuff. He says, oh my Lord, after a last, you know, and Allah knows that he can't bear it. Please just put me under that tree so I may use its shade and drink from its water and I won't ask for anything, anything anymore. Allah will say, my servant, what's wrong with you? You're not patient. You promised me. And he'll say, my Lord, this is my absolute last request. So then Allah says, very well. He puts him under that tree and he begins to drink of its water and shaded from its shade. And then Allah builds, and then he brings up another tree, which is even nicer than the former one, even better. And then he says, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Allah says, no, 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 no. He says, please, please, please. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because if I put you there, you may ask me again. So he says, Uahiduk, I promise you I will not ask for anything. So he puts him beneath that tree. Now he is close to the door of Jannah. And he hears sounds he's never heard before. He goes, what? People in there? What is this? And Allah knows he cannot bear the patience. So after a long time, he says, My Lord, can you please just let me inside that door? I won't ask for anything from that. I just want to see what's there. Curiosity. Allah knows that the servant can't handle it. So then he says, Abdi, you promise never to ask for anything? He says, I promise. He says, all right, I'll put you through that door. So then he puts him. Now where is he? He's inside the lowest, lowest part of Jannah. The first entrance. And then suddenly he gets despaired. He's sad. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the conversations with him. He says to him, Abdi, my servant, what is wrong? And he will say, my Lord, I realize that I'm the last person and that everybody has taken their position already. There's nothing left for me. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Abdi, Ayrudika, would you be happy if I gave you the whole world and double its amount? One like it, like whatever the world's size and another world the size of it, all for you from this paradise. Imagine the size of the world. I gave you two earths just for you from the earth, from the land of paradise. Would you be happy? And then the man says, replies, Ay Rabb, atastahzi'u bi, wa anta Rabbul Alameen. He says, my Lord, now you're just teasing me, and you are the Lord of all creation. So he thinks Allah is teasing him now. He says, you want as much as the world? And he says, you, are you teasing me? And everybody has entered where they've entered, and there's nothing left to me. Now you're telling me, you want, I'll give you the size of the, double the earth? And you are the Lord of all mankind, my Lord. I don't mean to be rude. 
In the hadith it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yadhak, fadahik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he laughs. Now we don't understand, we can't explain how he laughs. But we know what laughter is, meaning that it's a positive gesture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs in a manner that befits him. There is nothing that can be described upon him or compared to him. And he hears and sees all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy to his response. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrates this hadith, he says, I laughed. And the people asked me, why do you laugh? I said, I'm laughing because the messenger of Allah laughed when he told us this hadith. And I asked him, why do you laugh, O messenger of God? And he says, I'm laughing to the laughter of my Lord. That when a servant said to, when he said to his servant, would you, I offer you the size of the earth, double the amount of paradise. He said, my Lord, are you mocking me? And Allah laughed to him. In another hadith, he says, you will have as much as the earth and 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 repeated it seven times. This is for the most lowest part. You know, this is the poorest person in, hell, in heaven. This is the last person in heaven that, that is entered into heaven. This is what he gets. I'm going to save the rest till next week, inshallah. And we're going to begin from here. The lowest earning in, hell, in heaven. What is it from this man? I'm going to continue what he gets, inshallah. And the conversations that occur between us and the people of heaven, between us and the, and, and, and the angels, and between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khay for listening. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hell. For Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ghadabika wa nar. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min nar. Allahumma najjina min nar. Allahumma ba'ad baynana wa bayna nar. Allahumma wa ba'ad baynana wa bayna ma'asina. Allahumma wa ba'ad bayna ma'asina lati tudkhilana nar. Allahumma aghfir lana dhalatina wa dhunubina ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma anta al-ghafur al-rahim faghfir lana. Oh Allah forgive us. Oh Allah keep us away from the sins that make us enter into hellfire. Oh Allah keep us as far as the west from the east from our hellfire. From, from hellfire and from our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins. He's the most merciful. And we ask Him for paradise and the meeting of Him and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, in, in Jannah. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli adha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum. Thank you brothers and sisters. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallahu khayr.